How in the world have I ended up doing this list when there is a perfectly good Luke Owen right there? Yes, the passage of time has allowed for mid-2000s nostalgia to rear its Jeff Jarrett-shaped head, and now TNA Wrestling will once again be hitting the airways in 2024. Congrats, Luke. You finally won. Now let's look at who can bolster the TNA roster to coincide with the return to... Glory seems like too strong of a word. Let's just say the return. I'm Tempest from Wrestle Talk, and these are the 10 biggest signings TNA could make. Now TNA is back. Number one, CM Punk. Oh, how Pepsi Phil just loves to keep us on our toes. Just a few weeks ago, we were sitting here discussing CM Punk's return to WWE, with Survivor Series 2023 looking almost nailed on to be his big welcome home party at one point in time. Yet, now, unbelievably, we're not only talking about the return of TNA wrestling, but CM Punk being perhaps its marquee signing for the promotion big 2024 reboot. What even is wrestling news? So, with WWE and AEW out, it's easy to see why Punk to TNA makes sense. For TNA to make as big a splash as possible upon their rebrand, they do need big names, and Punk would be about as big a signing as they could get. Given the reports that Punk was indeed backstage at Bound for Glory, this one genuinely seems in the cards, especially with his pal Ace Steel also working on a trial basis as a producer on that same show. The only question is whether TNA can in fact afford his high price tag and whether that WWE door is truly shut for good. Because if it is at least slightly ajar, Punk may not be willing to choose TNA as his long-term home, especially when it may be the last big move he makes in wrestling. We shall see. Number two, Will Ospreay. While Punk is the biggest name available to TNA right now, the absolute biggest get for the promotion would undoubtedly be Will by God Ospreay. Ospreay has been open about his current contract sitch with New Japan, with a 30-year-old reportedly considering all his options available as WWE and AEW likely lurk around the corner, which, given Will's penchant for five-star matches, is unsurprisingly every wrestling company under the sun. So why, oh why, would he swap either of them for TNA? Well, did you see Bound for Glory? Did you see his match with Speedball Mike Bailey? Well, yeah, that pretty much says it all. Osprey has openly stated how much of a great time he had working in Impact over last weekend, putting over the company in a big way. He's also young enough that, even if it was for a fairly short-term deal, he could massively help get the rebooted TNA off the ground while also having time to pursue a deal with WWE or AEW later down the line. Given the options available to him, his signing would be a statement that TNA is to be taken seriously in the wrestling space once again and could also convince others to follow suit. Number three, Mustafa Ali. Of the recent spat of WWE releases, Mustafa Ali is perhaps the one fans are most excited to follow, namely because we truly haven't seen an iota of Ali's true potential, which is baffling considering the guy's been on our WWE TV screens since 2016. 16. While he looked at several points to be getting pushed to the top of the WWE card, Ollie famously became yet another what if in WWE's history. Sadly, the most notable thing he did was retribution. Slapjack that slapjack. So, with Ollie's creative well being untapped and his in ring prowess as good as it gets, it's very easy to understand why TNA should make him one of their new marquee names. TNA's X Division was once heralded for showcasing workers of Ollie's ilk, and it would be easy to see him putting on classics there. But to be perfectly honest, I think that's selling Ollie short. Similar to other ex-WWE wrestlers like EC3, Rich Swan, or Steve Macklin, Ollie could easily fulfill his potential and become TNA World Champion someday. Ollie, like other late September releases, will be available to compete again, rather conveniently in time for the TNA rebranding in the new year. So watch this space. Number four, Shelton Benjamin. As much fun as it was getting our hopes continuously up for that ever-elusive Hurt Business reunion, our dreams were sadly squashed when Shelton Benjamin was among WWE's talent cuts in September. September. Now, when it comes to underrated and underused talent in WWE's history, I truly believe the gold standard sets, well, the standard. The man was and still is simply incredible. So seeing him sit on the sidelines doing literally nothing since Lashley broke the band up truly hurt my soul. However, with him now free of his WWE restraints, Shelty Benji is once again able to show what he has been capable of much like he did when he left WWE in 2010. Not only is he still in incredible shape and has barely lost a step, he also has decades of experience to lend to the new generation. TNA's return will, of course, have no shortage of experienced heads, with the likes of Frankie Kazarian, Eric Young, and Alex Shelley kicking about, but Still, having Benjamin on board too can only be a good thing and could be a well-needed veteran presence in the company's X Division. Regardless, whether it's TNA, New Japan, or AEW, somebody needs to give this man his flowers. Number five, Emma. Unlike Ollie and Benjamin, Emma has already done this dance before, as following her previous release from WWE in late 2017, the Aussie star did find her way to Impact as Tennille Dashwood. After over a year in ROH, Dashwood debuted in Impact in 2019, staying until her eventual return to WWE in 2022. While she 
did obtain some success winning the Knockouts tag titles with Madison Rain, Dashwood also has some unfinished business, namely the Knockouts Championship currently held by Trinity. Unlike her extremely uneventful 11-month stint back in WWE, which had such highlights as... Um... Hmm... Anyway, point is, in the new TNA, Dashwood will most certainly be utilized to her full potential, as the Knockouts division is almost inarguably the best booked women's division in North American wrestling. Or perhaps, as a sneaky, unofficial 11th entry, Dashwood could return to TNA with her fiancé Riddick Moss in tow, who was also sadly let go from WWE at the same time. Maybe he can bust through that window, or TV, or whatever that entrance was that one time. Nevertheless, Dashwood seems like a no-brainer. She could even maybe reunite with Santino Morella, just like the good old days, or also not. Yeah. Maybe not. Number 6. Dolph Ziggler At one point in time, considered one of the best wrestlers WWE had to offer, Dolph Ziggler, like Benjamin, has seen his last few years utterly wasted in WWE. Hell, you could argue that the Shaw Off's entire career has been one massive waste of potential, despite his many, many accolades. While many stars left WWE to prove their worth elsewhere, Ziggler's last three to four years have passed him by without much of note happening at all. But fear not, because there is still plenty of time for one last great run. The question is where does Mr. Ziggles go? While a stint in AEW and potential tag team run with his brother Ryan makes some sense, TNA would also be an excellent proving ground for Ziggler to show why he is still among the very best. Similarly to Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and Matt Hardy, Ziggler could go to TNA and completely reinvigorate his career just when people believe his best days are behind him. Hopefully this would come with a complete rebrand of Ziggler's long stale character of Yamayugi screaming to the heavens that it should have been him, and could prove to WWE what they had. Or, you know, he could just not do any of that and focus on a stand-up comedy career. Whatever makes makes you happy, Dolph. Number 7. Matt Riddle Although the original bros rep kinda took a nosedive towards the end of his WWE run, Matt Riddle was always a popular star in WWE and could most certainly go with the very best of them inside the ropes. If things had gone differently, Riddle almost certainly could have been a future world champion in WWE. While it is a shame that Riddle won't be fulfilling that potential in WWE, what's to say he can't find his way back to a prominent spot in another company, namely TNA? Whether TNA gives him another shot in wrestling remains to be seen. However, there have been reports of several wrestling promotions interested in the 37-year-old, so it wouldn't be hard to imagine. He has enough name power and notoriety to draw eyes to TNA's relaunch, and has more than a laundry list of potential opponents that he could put on bangers with. Besides, TNA already has such an amazing history with ex-UFC fighters, right? Right? What could go wrong? Number 8. Sheamus Moving away from those currently without a WWE contract to one that may soon be hitting the free agency market, the Celtic warrior Sheamus is among the many stars with contracts set to expire in 2024. While fellow WWE contract expiree and Sheamus' good brother Drew has already done the TNA song and dance, Sheamus has yet to make that move outside of WWE, mainly because he hasn't really had to. Yes, unlike Drew who had to really go through WWE's creative ringer, Sheamus has had a decorated and consistent WWE career. However, things have not been ideal as of late. The Irishman has made no secret of his creative frustrations in WWE in 2023, and perhaps the damage may be done to his chances of signing on for an extension. While any company would be lucky to have Sheamus, a move to TNA would obviously be a massive coup. He's a bona fide world champion and could actually have a really great title reign that he arguably never properly got in WWE. Also, given his documented history of nagging injury problems, a move to TNA would reduce the stress on his body and allow for more years of meat slapping pints of Guinness, bangers, and all that good stuff to come. Number 9. Mercedes Monet Another star who could have her pick of future destinations, Mercedes Monet seems to be AEW bound at some point in the near future. Maybe full gear? But what if instead she held fire and jumped upon the TNA train? Choo choo. Now, similarly to Punk, this would be a massive statement signing, but also similarly to Punk, I'm not sure that TNA could actually afford her. I mean, surely a star whose finisher was the bank statement must be charging a high price for her signature. Signature, right? And that's perfectly justifiable, as Monet truly is a superstar in every sense of the word, which makes it absolutely key that she joins a company that will treat her and her talents as such. And that means not just competing in your one token 10 minute women's match on Dynamite every other week. As mentioned, TNA is the place for a well booked, respectfully treated women's division. So, if the decision was based off that alone, then it would be a no-brainer. Well, when you also couple the fact that Mercedes BFF Trinity is also there as Knockout's champ, well then, I mean, it just makes almost too much sense, doesn't it? And number 10, Mandy Rose. Sticking with the Knockouts, while Monet may potentially be out of reach, perhaps a more feasible option would be the signing of former NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose. Rose has stayed far away from the wrestling ring since her shock December 2022 release, making some serious cash on platforms such as Fantime and now OnlyFans. While that may 
seemingly spell a lack of need to actually return to wrestling, she has also made sure not to rule out a return to the ring on a permanent basis. Given the nature of her release and her following outside of the ring, snapping up Rose to be a major piece of the already stacked knockouts division would be a stroke of genius from Scott Demore and company. Also, TNA is far less likely to have anywhere near the restrictions that WWE had on the content Rose decides to produce on her OnlyFans, meaning she could by all accounts likely have the best of both worlds with a far less demanding in-ring schedule to boot. And she could lead toxic non-stop attraction or something. I don't know, they'll figure it out. Wrong era. In wrong era. Hey, yes, we got it. Still wrong era. Still wrong era. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for the one, two, three! three.